now. That has been started. Welcome, welcome everyone that is on Facebook with us. And again, welcome everyone who is on the conference call with us at Get em Radio. Uh, if you want to join us on Get em Radio uh, for overtime, after the live video has finished, you can call in at 619-639-4733. Again, welcome everyone to God in the Midst Radio, Friday Night Lights Edition. Get them, Friday Night Lights Edition with Pastor Mark McCoy and my co-host, Pastor Paul McCoy. Oh, hallelujah. I, I'm, I'm just kind of easing into this one tonight. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. Lord, you have been better to us than we ever could be to ourselves. But Lord, we just give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise. You're so worthy, God, of all the praise. We lift you up now and we say thank you, Lord. We say praise you, Lord. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer who lives. Lord, let this word tonight be anointed. Let it touch someone that needs your touch, the Lord. Let it encourage someone that needs encouragement. And then, Lord, most of all, let it touch someone that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, that they might accept you as Lord and Savior. Oh, Lord, we thank you this night. Bless as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. We started a series in the first of this month of June, and I mean, month of April, excuse me, and my brother, I called him June. <laughs> we call him June Book found, uh, fondly, and he, he started this series, Pastor H.J. McCoy. He started this series, and then he had to have surgery, and so he could not finish the series. And so, as normal, he passes it on to his little brother. <laughs> and so I am taking on this series, and I'm just so excited about this series. This series is called The Writing is on the Wall. The Writing is on the Wall from the book of Daniel, chapter 5. And just as a quick review, we, we talked about this writing on the wall where, where King uh, 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 Belgezar was having a party with all of his crew. And, and, and God got upset because he went, that, that uh, King Belgezar went and grabbed the sacred cups and the sacred utensils that the uh, Babylonian had captured from the Israelites, and they started drinking out of them for this party. Oh, my God. So God, in part one, he had to send him a text message. That's the writing on the wall. And then because his, 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 his uh, King Belzazar astrologers could not could not uh, understand what was going on. Uh, they told him, say, King, you better call somebody. And the king called on Daniel. And, and then we went and looked at the text a little bit further. And Daniel, Daniel, it is your time. It's your time now, Daniel. It's your time. It's your time. And so now tonight, tonight, we're going to go into the last part of this message, the last part of this message. And where I want to go right now is verse 24 of Daniel chapter 5. It reads, therefore, he sent the hand that wrote, 
Therefore, he sent the hand that wrote the inscription. That's God sent this hand. And this is the inscription that was written. Uh, mine, mine, takia, hasin. Here, here, here is what these words mean. Uh, Mene means God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. To kill, to kill uh, it means you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Uh, Paris means your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then at Bel Tazar's command, Daniel was clothed in purple. A gold chain was placed around his neck, and he was proclaimed the third highest ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belzazar, king of, Bab of the Babylonians, was slain, and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at the age of 62. The subject title for tonight is three words. Three words. Three words. Three, three words. And these three words, these three words says, Mene, Mene, the kill her scene. And that those are the three words. I said one twice, but 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 what I'm gonna bring these three words down into our today's vernacular, and it is time's up. Time's up. You, you know, last week we talked about about about, about uh, 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 Daniel uh, being at the right place at the right time, and and and, and then it was his time. It's your time, and we talked about. To encourage us to know that, that, that God arranges events and situations and he lets us know when it's our time. But this one, this one here, is not just a word of encouragement for, for the king. It, 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 it is a condemnation to the king. And God is telling him, your time is up. Time is up. Time is up. And so as we gather here tonight, uh, 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 we're going to hear this word from the Lord. It is essential that, that we don't make a tragic error in our theology and our theological construction. We, we commit a, oh, a tragic error when we surmise and assume that God only speaks at the church. God, because he is omnipotent and omnipresent and all-powerful, is, he is not limited to where he speaks. When, when he speaks he, and how he speaks, a, a cursory view of Scripture, both Old and New Testament, would allow us to see that God speaks in various locations. God spoke in the garden called Eden. God spoke in a nation called Eden. God spoke to a people in the wilderness. God spoke on a mountainside, on a valley, and in the peaks. God spoke on the water at a baptismal service. God spoke outdoors, in houses, in caves, and other dwelling places. God has spoken. In a prepla of places. Remember, remembering that the remember the, the establishment of the temple came long after God spoke in Genesis. And the establishment of the church came long after Jesus advent in the book of Matthew. The issue of this text. Is that whether God speaks outside of areas reserved for his worship? The issue really is, is whether or not we are spiritually attuned to hear his voice. The song, the song writer once said, I see his hands of mercy. I, I, I hear his voice of cheer. But the reality is, is that many of us have not even looked to, don't even look to hear. God's voice. 
he he speaks to us in various ways and in different venues but but the truth is that many of us miss what god has to say the trouble the trouble the trouble that trouble that 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 that, that you went through could have been avoided had you just listened to what God had to say. That, that relationship that was never equally yoked in the first place would have never came to pass had you listened, listen to what God had to say. Those friends that, that mama warned you about it, God told you to leave alone. You would have never gotten into that situation that you landed in had you listened. But what God has to say. Well, I got some good news. The good news is that 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 God is speaking to us in, in this dispensation that we're in. He talks to us through His preacher. He talks to us through His actions, and He talks to us through His Spirit. And primarily, He talks to us through His Word. If you say that God has never spoken to you, that is a misnomer. If you heard the preacher, God is speaking to you. If you watch God in action, God is speaking to you. If you hear his spirit moving on the inside of your soul, God is speaking to you. If, if, if you would just sit down and open your Bible, God is speaking to you. God is speaking right now, even in this text. This, this is the conclusion of, of the fifth chapter of Daniel, and it is also the conclusion of the circumstances concerning King Belshazzar. King Belshazzar's party has been interrupted. Well, the Holy Spirit interrupts and stuff by a hand that, that appeared out of nowhere, writing words that no one in the king's domain could interpret. This this. This suggests that there was there may have been an issue of not translation but interpretation. Mm -hmm. These words are, are, are on the wall appeared, and, and there's nowhere in the hierarchy of Be Be uh, 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 King Belshazzar that could interpret them. His wives could not interpret them. His sons and his daughters could not. His lords and his ladies could not. I could not. It, it, it is so it is it is so determined that the king needed somebody to interpret, to tell him what the phrase on the wall means. Not a translator who, who can take the language and find familiar words in the Babylonian tongue, but an interpreter who, who could tell the king what these words on the wall mean and, and their importance to him and his kingdom. You better call somebody. He called Daniel. Daniel, who, 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 whose Hebrew name has been utilized since his promotion into the kingdom under King Nebuchadnezzar, the king's second primary pre, uh, predecessors are uh, are. Uh, uh, King yeah has 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 rec has recommended by his captors why they say go get Daniel you know that one king Nebuchadnezzar used Daniel is a slave within the kingdom he 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 may hold the title but 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 he's still a slave yeah. Daniel is now about to tell the king what, what he's been waiting to hear and the interpretation. The words mean a to kill and purpose. This, this, this is my outline tonight. That's, I'm going to talk about these three words. The first one being men a. Daniel, Daniel said that when I look at these words that the hand of God has written on the wall of your palace, King Belshazzar, during the feast of celebration, the first word is meaning. 
That word normally has to do with finances and accounting. And, and, and in the Babylonian Empire, it would have to do with 50 to 60 shillings. But the interpretation for this is this, King. God has numbered thy kingdom, and it is finished. Simply put, your time is up. Your time is fixed. He has numbered your kingdom, and he's finished it and announced that the tenure is at hand. That there is only one person who could tell you when it's over, and it is God. Only God can tell you when it's over. And until you hear it from God, it's not over. Until God says it's over. There's only one person that can tell you when your life is done, and that is God. And the reason why you and I are alive today is because God said, I ain't done with you yet. No matter how much Satan and all of your enemies and, and even yourself may have tried, you are alive because God has willed it so. I wish I had some folks that in here that, 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 that are listening right now that, that have been in a car wreck, in the hospital, been sick, been depressed, felt like you were about to die, but, but you're still here. Your time here on earth is fixed, and only God can tell you when. I learned that God, God ha has destiny for you. you. You will not die until you've accomplished what God has purposed you to accomplish. I'm saying something to somebody. Stop worrying about whether or not you're going to die or whether or not things are. No, God got a purpose and a plan for your life. King Belshazzar was not in power because of a boat. He, he, he was in power because of the will of God. However, y'all got to hear me now. When he got into power, he forgot who put him into power. Uh-oh, I didn't say it something. Oh, you know, I got the medal. We got a lot of my our, 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 our white evangelistic friends who, who are evangelical and, and they on a claim. Yes. Yes, God put that man in power. God put him in the White House. So leave him alone. But I'm here to tell you. He got in by the will of God. And by the will of God, God can tell him, your time is up. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, see, 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 before, before we jump, before we jump on King uh, Belshazzar, like, I, I know some people uh, uh, who get blessed by the Lord and forget who blessed them. I, I have seen I've seen folks get cars and 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 new spouses and, and new clothes and, and new jobs and then they stop coming to church. Oh, you gotta hear me. They stop giving to the church. They stop praying. They stop shouting. They stop singing. Somebody don't take all that. They have forgot who blessed them. But 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 listen, I I, I will bless the Lord at all times. And, and that simply means I will bless the blesser. I, I will bless him in praise because he has blessed my life. Uh, I will bless him in praise because he blessed me with joy. He's blessed me with life. I will praise him because he's made a way out of no way for me. Don't forget who's in control. Don't forget that God has the last word. So you better give him praise. We better give him praise. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The first interpretation is meaning. God 
has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. The second word from Daniel chapter 5 is to kill. It means balance. Here, here, here is what's going. Here's what's going to blow your mind. God, God says that Belshazzar is off balance. I, I'm going to say that again. He says, Belshazzar, you're off balance. When, when, when God placed them on his scale, he, 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 he was found wanting and lacking. Here, here's the picture of it. On, on one side of the scale is, is God and his luck. On the other side of the scale, uh -huh, on the other side of the scale, it's the king's life. The problem is that the two weights don't balance each other out. It would appear that God is, is, is rooting for us to live a balanced life, but the truth of the matter is that God will not put his finger on the scale to fix it for us, but he is noticing and monitoring the balance of the scale. Let, let, let's talk a minute. Let me, let, me, let me explain this. Let me explain this. See, see, believers today need to be balanced, but 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 not in the way some of us think. We think we're balanced when we're like, you know, uh, kind of a hybrid. You know, like a hybrid car. You know how the hybrid cars work. They, 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 they have a battery and they have gasoline and, and you put gasoline in the engine and you put a battery and they work together and, and you can get 50 miles to a gallon and more. But that's not the kind of balance God is looking for. He, he's, look, he's not looking for a hybrid of, 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 of good and a hybrid of bad. He's not looking for a hybrid. Some folks think that, that we're balanced when, when our bad side is counterbalanced by our good side. I, I know I'm, I'm a child of God, but I, 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 I've got some issues. And God, this is how we say it, but God understand, he know my heart. No, no, God is not watching to see your, you weigh yourself against yourself. God says that the weight that, that, that you have to weigh yourself against is not yourself, and not your fellow church member, not your family member, but it's God. He had, he, he had a, oh, hallelujah. I, I had a member once who, whose family came to me and they said, Pastor, we, we so sick and tired of our sister. She, she walking around all arrogant and proud and full of herself at church. She, she thinks she better than the rest of us. Pastor, she doing the same thing we doing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, listen. We are not in competition with each other. Don't, don't ever get it in your mind that you're better than anyone else. So it, it, it rains on the just as well as the unjust. All of, of our righteousness is like filthy rags, not compared to each other, but compared to God. The problem was that King Belshazzar never repented of his sins. He, he never had a relationship with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, and when you don't have a relationship with God, your life is unbalanced. You're all out of balance. A few of us may 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 may, may understand uh, about this thing they call vertigo. Vertigo is 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 an imbalance which is caused by a few small crystals deposited, uh, 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 which lands on the 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 the, the ear canal. Those small crystal deposits in the ear control the balance of the body. Why, why do you mention that, you say? Well, well, because some of you, some of us,
are uh, 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 off balance spiritually and could and it could be caused by what you've been hearing. When 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 you when you choose to hear gossip, that, that puts you off balance. When you choose to hear negativity, that puts you off balance. When you choose to, to let them, them little crystal deposits of rumors get into your ear, you're off balance. When you choose to hear foolishness and, and when you choose to hear some book oh, 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 I don't mean to go that yeah it will affect your balance with God's spirit so the first word was meaning God has numbered your kingdom and it's finished the second word is be careful you 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 are weighed in the balance and are found one the third word is Perez. Listen, listen, listen. This word has, has several uh, 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 unusual translations in the Bible. But, but, but what we're going to deal with tonight, it simply means to take something in your hand and break it into. I can take this paper. I, we call it tearing it but tearing it into. Yeah, 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 yeah. It means to take that which is whole, which was 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 only one and break it into two or more parts that will not come back together again. I'm talking to somebody right now. And here is what's going to blow your mind. After it's broken, you may or may not get a piece of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel, Daniel said that, that 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 God says that your kingdom has been divided and it's been given to your enemies. He, here's what's interesting about that. At the time of, uh, 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 of his analysis, the kingdom was not divided. Babylon was one of the strongest nations around and there was no apparent uprising, no obvious trouble. That's why he was having the party in the first place, because he was the party host. He was the party man that night, and it was during the daytime. He started the party early. It, it was part of their ritual in Babylon for them to honor their God. Uh, 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 what's her name? Uh, 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 Osiris. And, and she was a, a God that uh, connected, that, that, that was a fraternal uh, fertility God and, and her husband or uh, uh, he or uh, he and and uh, he was the the God of Isis. Many of us have heard of Isis. So Oresus was the husband of the God of Isis, and his brother self killed him after he died. They believe he was restored to life to rule the afterlife. Mm -hmm. Well. Belshazzar and his people were celebrating a false god who was not real. The real god was allowing the Medes and the Persians to take over the kingdom while they were partying. Let, 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 let me try that again. Let me try that again. While they were celebrating a false god, the real god was allowing their enemies to come in take over the streets, and they were on their way to the palace. God took the nation of Babylon in his hands and split it in half, one part going to the Medes and one part going to the Persians. And Belshazzar was not going to get anything. He, he, here's what's going to bless you. Sometimes when, when God blesses you, uh, when God blesses me, it is necessary because you've been so good. It, it, it is not necessarily because you have been so good. I have been so good. No, 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 no. Sometimes God is blessing us. Blessing you and blessing me with somebody else's stuff. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm going. Wait a minute. Our God gonna bless us with somebody else's stuff. Well, okay, you gotta remember. You gotta remember. We're talking about Israel and, and, and we're talking about the children of Israel. They 
They were in bondage in Egypt, and God sent Moses to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. They left Egypt, and God said, I will send you into a land flowing with milk and honey. You will eat from the crops you didn't plant. You will live in houses that you didn't build. The truth of the matter is that it was 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 owned by another nation, and God blessed Israel with somebody else's stuff. I, 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 I could testify right there that God has blessed me with things that should not have gone uh, to me, but have should have gone to somebody else. Uh, he blessed me with a job that, that should have gone to, to somebody else, more qualified than me. I, I, I have preached in places that I thought I would never preach in, but the God has moved somebody else to bless me with, with what they should have had themselves. God, God allowed the Medes and, and the Persians to approach, even there was no indication that they were on their way. Daniel gave the interpretation. God then moved on behalf of one more on, on behalf of Daniel one more time. Daniel should have been killed for giving the king bad news. Daniel, Daniel should have been executed right on the spot and made an example for speaking to the king right there. God, oh, but God. Somebody ought to holler, but God. But God made the king keep his promise. I, I need to tell somebody that if, if God is for you, <laughs> who can be against you? Daniel is promoted even though he gave the king some bad news. Daniel was restored to what he had had under King Nebuchadnezzar years ago. God blessed him to sit as the third highest officer in the land and the number one ranking slave in the kingdom. But, but, but that night, uh, that night, the Medes came and overran the kingdom. Belshazzar was killed that same night. No one saw that coming, but, but God did. I, I'm on closing right now, but in the midst of chaos and confusion, God has a way of blessing you in the midst of it all. I, I've seen God bless while you're going through your troubles. I've seen God bless while you're going through your trials. Is there somebody here that knows that God can bless you right in the middle of some chaos, right in the middle of some mess? He can bless you in the middle of chaos in your home. He can bless you in the middle of chaos at your job. He can bless you in the middle of chaos in your church. He can and bless you in the middle of chaos in your family and in your finances. He can bless you right in the middle of your health issue. Is there anybody here today that understands that and can testify that God can take your mess and give you a message? God can take your trials and give you triumphs. God can send you through a test and let you go through the test and give you a right in the middle of the chaos. Daniel was blessed. He got a new role and he got a new title. In the midst of the chaos, they, that's why I serve the Lord because I know I am blessed. In the midst of chaos, one of these days, I'm going to put on my new role after the chaos is over. I'm going to get my new title. No, it won't be real. It won't be God. It won't be and it won't be president. It won't be a husband. No, I will get a new title. And it'll be servant. And I can hear him say, servant, well done. My good and faithful servant. I, it comes from Jesus. The same Jesus who died on the cross for your sins and mine. That's why I'm getting it. That's why you're going to get it. Yes, it's coming from God. He died on the cross for your sins and my sins. And God got him up early that Sunday morning and gave him all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord and Savior to the glory of God. Oh, I want you to know you need to talk to your stuff 
in your life, just like Daniel did, and say to your financial problem, say to your debt, debt, financial problem, these three words, signs up. God's going to break this stuff up. God's going to deliver you from your financial problem and your debt problem. Your time is up, devil. You can't have hold of me. You had me once. You should have kept me, but God didn't broke you. And he said, your time is up. That's my time. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. We need to speak those three words to anything and anybody that is holding us back from our blessings because God is trying to take us to places, destinies that we don't even have to do anything for. He's going to take it. Whatever the devil stole He's got to return it. And you got to be able to speak those things that are not as though they are and tell it. Minye, minye, to kill Perez. In other words, your time is up. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I hope you enjoyed this word and it was a word to encourage you and, and will strengthen you to be able to speak to those things that are holding you back, those things that, that, that are keeping you from doing what God wants you to do to keep you from being blessed by God. You need to speak to him and tell him now. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to speak out now. And it, it's so simple. All you have to do is confess with your mouth. Speak that thing. And then believe it in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and God raised him from the dead. If you do that, he said he will save you. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray the prayer of salvation. Will you pray that prayer with me right now? Repeat after me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to be the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. You pray that prayer and truly believe in your heart. You are now saved. I encourage you to find a local church. Hey, text me on Facebook. Hey, I, I'll tell you where a local church body is in your area. Oh, you can just join us here on God in the Midst. Uh, be with us on the radio. Be with us on Facebook. And I promise you, you'll have some fellowship. As a matter of fact, we're getting ready to go into overtime. And in overtime, that's where we fellowship with one another. We, we get prayer requests, praise reports, encouraging words. And all you have to do to join us in overtime is dial 619-639-4733. Again, 619-639-4733. Facebook, you be blessed. We're going into overtime on God in the midst where we fellowship with one another. God bless you. And remember, always be a blessing.